uh, on this. You accept that you have broken the law, but you think it's a stupid law, so it doesn't matter. Well, actually, I thought I was breaking the law because at that time we'd had someone heavily fined for breaking incitement, the, incitement to religious hatred law, which it now turns out a few weeks ago isn't yet a law. The government's still pressing for it. So since I'm talking about Muslims, no, I haven't yet broken well, any law. My, if I was to repeat that after that new law goes through, uh, then I would be breaking the law, and I intend to break that bad law. My understanding is that you may have broken the law, Section 18 of the Public Order Act. The existing law covers what you said. That's my understanding on the yeah, other uh, And my understanding is that that's not the case, because that refers to uh, races. So it would, for instance, refer to a religion which was exclusive to one race, since Islam is not a race-based religion, there is no offence in criticising Islam, well, well, and there shouldn't be an offence. If someone's lying and trying to cause trouble, then there's common law uh, provisions to deal with that. But the idea that someone can be jailed for telling the truth is a scandal. Let's go to the heart of the truth as you would see it. You said in that speech in Keithley that the Quran tells Muslims of the rapes in Keithley, that's acceptable. Then you say, no, that sentence could get me seven years in prison. You repeatedly boast about breaking the law, and you effectively say that this, quote, wicked, vicious faith mm -hmm. has expanded by rape. Serious. Now, you asked about, about six questions in that, in, in that point. I did not boast about breaking the law. I illustrated the fact that we no longer have free speech in this country. I'm saying how outrageous it is that if I say this outside, I could be prosecuted. I did not say that there's a direct connection between these uh, rapes and abductions of young teenage white girls and the Quran, but I said that there are elements within the teachings of the Quran, verse after verse after verse, which can be taken by people, uh, especially young Muslims who've got a sort of a punk understanding of their religion, which can be take, taken to justify this. I think you're not a Quranic scholar, I'm not a Quranic scholar, but I have got the words that you said in front mm -hmm. of me. You say, if they get a non-Muslim girl and they get her pregnant, then her community doesn't want her and the child generally grows up a Muslim. And that's the way that this wicked, vicious faith has expanded. Yeah, that's, that's nothing to do with the Quran, that's just a matter of historical fact. So, Islam has expanded because of rape. It's one of the ways in which it's expanded. It's also expanded, as um, the Quran tells its followers to do so, it's expanded at the point of the sword. You have no qualms about saying that? No, and uh, if the BBC thinks that, oh, I'm saying this secretly, and so on, no, I'm not saying it secretly. I've said it at a private meeting because we're not allowed to say it on camera. You give me 20 minutes or an hour, a special program, to dissect the Quran, and I will show you that we have a monster in our midst. But I, I just want to be absolutely clear that you are saying that a religion which attracts more than a billion people will worldwide is one of the fastest growing religions in Western Europe mm -hmm. has expanded because of rape. It is one of the ways in which it has expanded. You, if you look at the history of um, uh, India in 1948, you had mass rape going on there throughout what is now Bangladesh and so on, against, directed against Hindus and Sikhs. It seems to be part of what well, Ankara, the Labour MP, has said it's a cultural problem uh, with some of these people. As, it's not cultural, it's underlying, it's a religious as problem. As chairman of the British National Party, do you not understand, not only that that is offensive, but that the leader of any other political party in this country would have to resign for making the comments that you've just made? Then that really shows that they're not actually there talking up for reality, because I'm afraid it is reality. It's not just me, you'll find, if you go to Derby, there have been serious racial disturbances in Derby between young Muslims and young Sikhs who complain of precisely the same thing, an element within the young Muslim community preying on their girls for a mixture of sex and religious reasons. So when Michael Howard, the leader of the opposition, says the British National Party is entirely based on bigotry and hatred, he's right. No, Michael Howard also said that we're a stain on democracy. The fact is I was elected by a free democratic and secret ballot by about 70% of my membership, whereas he crawled to power uh, over, the, over his previous leader's back when he stabbed him in the back. He's never been elected. He's a stain on democracy. When you say in that speech, after making those comments about rape and the Quran, that you want people in this country to stand up and do something for the British National Party because otherwise they, Muslims, will do for someone in your family. That is the truth. That's breaking the law too, isn't it? Uh, no, it certainly doesn't break the law. Because inciting people to violence. No, it's not inciting people to violence at all, because the rest of the speech, and it's grotesquely unfair to take a few lines out of context. I've got the whole the, speech in yeah, front of me, then, and the then, context is quite clear. Then the rest of the speech is saying that violence isn't the way to do it. That not every, not, You can't blame these people for coming here to get a better life for their children. The problems of the politicians who created this multiracial society, and the answer is political, peaceful work through the Constitution to change the politicians. Would you actually welcome being prosecuted? 
uh, if I'm prosecuted uh, under the Race Act or under a new incitement to religious hatred for telling the truth about a religion which is in this country and is going to utterly transform our society and destroy our culture as, I, as, we, as we know it, then if I'm prosecuted for that and it becomes a platform, I'll be delighted, yes. Isn't the simple fact that anybody listening to you tonight and watching that documentary will conclude that the British National Party is a racist enterprise from the bottom to you at the top? No, you've only got to look at, um, say, people like Peter Hitchens writing in the Daily Mail, uh, Little John writing in The Sun, even people like uh, Polly Toyn Toynbee writing in The Observer. There is uh, an element of British society that are that are intellectuals and so on now, there's an understanding that there is a fundamental clash coming between Islam and the West, and on account of mass immigration, it's here in this country, and it's an issue which must be got out into the open, 